Hello, this is Reza Rat from Radacad. In this uh, second video of Power BI Data Mart, I'm going to talk about uh, how to get started with Power BI Data Mart. Where is uh, the place you can start building it? Uh, what are things to consider when you create a Data Mart? The UI to create a Data Mart. So this would be a full demo of building a Data Mart. Let's see how it is. <music> Uh, to start building a data mart, you have to work in Power BI service. Uh, you don't need Power BI desktop to build a data mart. That is one of the cool things about it. If you like to know what the data mart is or uh, learn why you should use it, check out the previous video, which I explained about that. In this video, we are going to build that. So uh, you have to use Power BI website. Just, you just need a web browser. You go to the powerbi.com. Uh, you need to create a workspace, but data mart can be only created in a workspace, but that workspace has to be either a premium capacity workspace or premium per user. So when you create a workspace, uh, make sure that one of these options is selected premium per user or premium uh, capacity. Um, or if you already have a workspace with this configuration, then you can uh, start building in that workspace. Now, I already have a workspace with these configurations, which I'm going to show you that. So this is a premium workspace. You already see that I have some uh, objects created in here, but for this example, I'm going to start building a new data mart. So first option is to create a workspace with premium capacity or PPU. The second thing is that you click on new and you would be able to select data mart. From new, you'll select data mart. If you click on a new and don't see still a data mart and you are a premium uh, workspace, then one option might be that the admin in your tenant perhaps uh, disabled the data mart creation because that can be customized in admin portal, in tenant settings, the Power BI admin has the ability to disable creation of, book, uh, of the data marts or enable it. So if it is enabled, if you click on new and then click on data marts, then the next step would be, it would pop up with, uh, um, with what we call, let's say, Data Mart Editor, a place that you can get started with building your Data Mart. The first step of that would be, of course, uh, connecting to a data source. So here is the Data Mart uh, Editor view. Uh, the first step, I can connect and get data from any of these data sources, or I can click on this, uh, and then I will see all the connectors that Power BI supports, which is more than 150 different data source connectors. Uh, I can get data from SQL Server, from Excel file, from a lot of different places. For this example, I use OData uh, and I use this link. If you want the link, check out the description below that has the link. Um, this is a open data source or data source you can use, uh, which has some data in it for orders. Um, so I click on next, then this is very similar to Dataflow. If you have created Dataflow before Power Query Online, it connects to that data source. It lists all the tables that I might uh, have in that data source. And then if I click on any of these tables, I'll see the preview of that in the right hand side. Now, what I'm actually doing is that I would uh, select orders and let's say select related tables because in a all data source, tables have relationships, so Power BI also understand that. So here I have these tables selected. I can select other tables if I want to as well, but for now this should be good enough. So uh, I click on transform data, that will bring the Power Query online, Power Query editor online, very similar to Power Query in Power BI Desktop, but this even have some extra features that we don't have in Power Query in Power BI Desktop. Um, just to show you some of the functionalities, these are functionalities that is, is available in Power BI Desktop as well, but I'm just showing to you. For example, I might want to combine order and order details into a table. I can actually go and um, merge them together into one table. Or if I want to, for example, uh, remove some of the columns, for example, in shippers table, for example, I don't need the phone number, I can go and remove that column or in the customer table, if there is no full name, if there is only, let's say, first name, last name, I can separate that, I can create full name, or uh, for example, this the address city 
region and country I can combine them all together or let's say address city country make it simpler I can combine that with add column merge column I can say create a separator which is custom comma space and I would call it full address just showing you the capabilities of course this is not a video that I take you through the entire uh, Power Query online experience and here it is so you can see those three columns combined together uh, so pretty much you can do all the transformations you want. Once you have done your transformation, let's say for now I'm just fine with it, I would say save. Now what happens in this case is that it saved that structure, it saved the data flow, it also load that data into Azure SQL database because Data Mart, Power BI Data Mart, it's not just the data flow, it's also Azure SQL database and after that the data set. So it creates that Azure SQL database and it and then it also loads it into a data set. So it built all of those three things behind the scene. And it also explains to me that uh, what the process is, what steps has been done. Um, during this step, if you want to go to your workspace, do something else, you can do that. Once that process is done, you'll get the tables in here uh, and you'll see the data of the table. So this tab is pretty much like the data tab in Power BI Desktop. This is the place that you see the actual data when you click on each table. Not just that, you can also use these three options to connect to another data source, get data from it, do transform data, which gives back that Power Query Online Editor again to do transformations if you want. And also enter data, similar to Power BI Desktop, you can actually come here and enter a data table if you want. In addition to that, if you select a table, you can create a measure on it or you can set up incremental refresh. For example, on the orders table, I can go and set incremental refresh. Uh, you need a table with date fields and here I have date fields. I can set up incremental refresh. I can say based on order date, let's say keep the last five years, but only refresh one year Incremental refresh is for scenarios that you don't want to load the entire data, you just want to load part of the data and that way I can do that. Or I can say only refresh change data based on a field. This is for situations that you have a field called modified date or something like that. Or if you want to refresh only complete days. All of these options are available for you to, to set up. Now, uh, that was the data tab. The second tab here is an interesting one. This is uh, called design tab. This is where you actually build queries, like a query builder. Now, why would you need to build a query? Let's say combination of some of these queries, you want to build a, like a drive table, an aggregated table, any types of tables that you might need to use in the future. And uh, that is how you can build a query. For example, I can get, drag and drop orders into here. It's like a query builder experience. Pretty much it's like a Power Query Online Editor again, but it builds a query behind the scene. I'll bring order details as well. And then I would say, well, combine this together. Let's say I would merge these queries as new. So merge this with order details based on the order ID. This helps me to choose the type of join I want to use for these two. I would choose the type of join I want after merging them together. This is the merged result. Then I can go and select those columns that I want from the next table. Let's say from that table, I would just get product ID, unit price, quant, everything except the order ID because I already got the order ID. And then I don't need all other columns here, I would go and remove them except, um, except order date, customer ID, I would select these and these last few columns. Then I can remove other columns. So I actually build these transformations and as I build it, you see that behind the scene, this will create a view in Azure SQL database. Uh, it may not at the very at this very beginning preview version of the Paria Data Mart editor, but it will in the future. Uh, in addition to that, another interesting thing is this: the SQL query part. And that is really exciting. Behind the scene, this is a SQL database. So there is actually a SQL database with these five tables at least in it. And I can query those databases by, database by writing SQL command. I can write, for example, select star from 
orders and you can see this is coming as well I can say inner join order details um, on orders dot order ID equal to order details dot order ID I think it this should be orders that is why it's like that yeah so something like that and then I run it and this would just return the result like a SQL query um, tool it runs it and I can open this in Excel if I want to I can create new tabs again some of these functionalities are not yet fully enabled this is a preview version we are looking at right now but yeah, I can write my SQL code right here easily and and run it right and then the last tab is the relationship tab this is where this is similar to the relationship tab in Power BI uh, desktop where you have these tables and you can define relationship between them in the same way that you relation you define relationship in Power BI desktop you can uh, double click on a relationship change the relationship one to many one to one the direction of relationship you can um, even select a field for example if it is a field such as, such as employee ID which you want to make it hidden you can make it hidden if there is a freight field that you want to change the format of that to currency you can do that so you can pretty much do everything you want here in terms of modeling not all the features again some of the features are still back in Power BI desktop but this soon be uh, able to build everything you want you can even build a new measure and that is really exciting now you can write DAX code inside this web UI editor which is really fantastic I can for example even make it bigger I can create something like freight year to date and I can say this is equal to calculate so I have the full like tax functions here very similar to Power BI desktop sum of freight let's say and dates year to date now this is really big it doesn't really let me show you how this works if this is perhaps a better view and the order date I would use here right so I just wrote this simple expression to show you how it works so this is a freight year to date I created as a measure and this is now part of my table I'm not sure which table I selected when I created that but it is it is added I can move it to another table if I want to in addition to all of these functionalities I also have the ability to set row level security similar to the way that we set row level security in um, in Power BI it's slightly different so I go to manage roles I create a role and let's say for customer table customer table actually has a field called country so I would say in customer table add country equal Germany for example so this is a role that has access to Germany data I would call it Germany sales I can create another role and this role can be for the country Mexico now as you realize if you have worked with Power BI role level security before is that I don't write DAX expressions here I create these role rules directly over here this means that um, this is a type of role that also writes into a database so instead of creating a role level security for the database Azure SQL database and creating a role level security for a data set separately you created one here and this will do it for both of that these are the great things of the data mart with this unified experience and then here exactly the same place I can assign it to the users I couldn't do that with the role level security in Power BI desktop because in Power BI desktop I define the role and then in the website after publishing it I have to assign to someone but here I can do both of these so let's say I have done that all of those configurations would work really simply so this UI this editor that you see is actually the place that you will spend most of your time building a data mart and you can rename it by clicking here I would call it uh, north wind sample 2 because I have created some samples previously with that name and that is actually a data mart created whenever I click on my uh, workspace I would be able to just filter it for data marts 
This is the data mart that I just created, but it's not just that data mart. The data mart also comes with the data set associated with that, that as well, which I'm going to talk about it in the next video. What is the what is the structure of a data mart? Um, what is under the hood of a data mart? How you can connect to a SQL database of it? How you can build reports out of it? How would you see the lineage view of that and everything else through that? If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and definitely make sure the next video of Power BI Data Mart. <music>